What do you think? Should we finish up row two? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and row two is almost done. We actually only have two more little blocks. So we did the three mixers and some of us chose to personalize that middle one because the fabric was not too busy on that, that bowl. So it was a good opportunity to, to do something a little personal for that one, specialize it in some way. So that was fun. So there's only two more blocks for row two. That is such an easy one. We had, this one seemed so much faster. So let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There were ten blocks on row one, that's why. So row one had um, ten blocks and there's only five blocks on row two. So we're already almost done. So I'm thinking, let's go ahead and just finish it, right? <laughs> so I'm going to do two together and one hooping. The, they can absolutely be done separately. In fact, the only part I'm going to merge together is the quilting design. So um, when, when I do the video in photos, it will look the same to you anyway once we finish the quilting. So totally up to you, but I will bring you over to the computer and show you how to merge those two blocks together on one hooping if you choose. So let's talk about what blocks we're going to work on. So we're going to work on We Whisk You a Merry Christmas and also on The Whisk. Those are both on page 12 of The Whisk book. So let's go ahead and go over each of them separately. So The Whisk Sentiment is on page um, 12. It's our 14th block. Our 14th block already. Wow, that's exciting. All right, so very simple block. You can see there's almost nothing in here. So this will be easy, and that's why I'm thinking why not just do two because the other one's super easy too. So let's go ahead and talk about these. So our main fabric, if you had the original, all right, this is the original one. This is the white with Christmas dots on it. Um, if you did not get the original one a few years ago, then you have a substitute from our sponsor, Your Best Friends Quilt Shop, and it looks like they sent out the white with white dots on it. All right, if you can see those dots on there. So tone on tone, white with white dots, or if you have the original, it's the white with multi Christmas color dots on it. All right, and we're going to start with this one at, what is it, 10 and a half by 8 and a half. So it's going to go this way. I've got a little crank in my corner, but that's okay. So 10 and a half by eight and a half. Make sure to back this big piece of fabric with some fusible stabilizer. I definitely recommend that. Um, and if you're using that white on white, this is that tip I've been saying throughout this video series that um, if you cut your stabilizer in like 10 by 8 for your stabilizer, then you can tell the, from, the front from the back pretty easily. Another tip that one of our viewers said is get a black light. They have a black light flashlight and it's super easy to tell the from, front from the back. So either way, so 10 and a half by 8 and a half for your big piece of main fabric. Um, for this block for the whisk sentiment and that's it. There's no appliques nothing just some stitching on it So we are going to quilt this in the hoop. So whenever we quilt we use our batting So our batting today is going to be where's my notes nine by seven nine by seven for our batting All right, and then we're going to quilt this in any quilting design that you want in six by eight a quilting design because the final cut size is eight and a half by six and a half so we want a quilting design that is six by eight it'll really be eight by six but it'll be listed in the Kimberbell designs as six by eight I'm going to use hobby one so hobby one let's see I have notes of what 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 is what Hobby One, where did I write that? There it is. Hobby One has the scrolls with the words, sugar cookie mixer, whisk rolling pin. So I think it's the same one that we use. That's my dog, that's Archer, sorry. Um, for the uh, mixer blocks actually. Let's see, Hobby One, yep, mix. that's what I used on the mixer block. So this whole row is going to be Hobby One and you don't forget, you can use whatever you want. I tried to keep it um, just something that went along with it. And since it's got the whisk in the quilting, I couldn't help myself. So, um, there is a whisk in it and there's, um, sugar cookies, mixer, whisk, rolling pin, spatula, jar, scrolls with words. So that will be a really fun one. So I'm going to use that, um, for we whisk you a Merry Christmas again in a six by eight quilting design. If you are, um, double hooping, what would that be like for, uh, what is it? 
four by, well, you could do four by six and four by eight. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> I have to think about that and I'll add that to the, um, the notes in the video editing process, but you would need to double hoop because your, your, hoop, your quilting design is going to be six by eight. That's too big. If you're using a five by seven hoop, if you have a six by 10 hoop, you can do it, but you would have to take out that, um, the, what is it? The uh, placement and tack down of the main fabric. That's the part that will make it six and a half by eight and a half. All right. So anyway, we wish you Merry Christmas. Super easy one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start on that. But like I said, I'm going to do them together. I'm going to do two today. You can absolutely choose to do them separately. Um, do one today, one tomorrow, if you have, depending on how much time you have available. So let's go ahead and talk about the next one. It is whisk. It is our 15th block and it is also on page 12 of our whisk book. And again, there's almost nothing in here. So that means it's a super easy one. So there's one little applique piece for the whisk handle. Very simple. So on this one, our main fabric is the red with multi dots on it, Christmas dots. So I didn't get a um, replacement for this one. Like if there was a substitution from our sponsor, I didn't get that. So you may have something different. Um, the other one she did send me, so she may have already had extra of this. So you may have this one, you may have something similar, but it is the, for this one, it is the red with um, multi dots. Make sure to back it with fusible stabilizer for your main fabric fabric so you don't get puckering and we're going to start with this one at six and a half by eight and a half that is our main fabric six and a half by eight and a half all right and then we have one applique piece so if you have the original kit then it came with this green with flowers on it and we're going to have this one at two by two and a half so this way two by two and a half um, and it is not a directional fabric the, fa the flowers go every which way if you received from our sponsor your best friend's quilt shop then they sent the new doodle fabric and that's super duper cute too so two by two and a half whether you have the original one or the newer one either one will work fine and will work great with the thread colors in the thread kit so that's the one applique piece, two by two and a half. And then we are going to quilt this. So our batting on this one is going to be five by seven, five by seven for our batting on this whisk block. And then we're going to quilt it. This one you can, if you have a five by seven hoop, you can quilt it in the hoop. It is going to be a four by six quilting design, whatever quilting design you want. Since it has a whisk, I decided on hobby one. So I'm going to use hobby one for my quilting design. Um, you can use any quilting design that is four by six. All right. So two very easy blocks and again you can do them separately you can do them in multiple days or all in one day depending on how much time you have available you can save some time and merge them together in one hooping that's what I'm gonna do there will be some overlap of fabric probably so you have to be a little bit careful of that but I will show you how to join them together it's gonna be super easy because I'm just gonna join the quilting and then the rest I'll do separately um, but I will show you what size hoop will work I already took a look at it and how to orient it to get it to fit. So I'll bring it over to the computer and let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, I'm at my computer now and I'm just very quickly going to show you how to merge these two designs together in one hooping. If you choose, you don't have to. Totally up to you and I am going to do it quick because it's pretty out and I want to get out for a walk while there's still a little bit of sunshine. So I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials. I have a whole bunch of windows open right now because I'm working on various things, but I'm going to just open it up here. So ignore like the tab numbers. My tab numbers will be different than yours. So I'm going to go to File, New Page. And I know that I need my 9 by 14 hoop, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So down here at the bottom, it'll say what hoop you're on. I'm on my 5 by 7 hoop right now, so I'm going to go up here to this Preferences folder and click on my 9 by 14 hoop and say OK. And then I'm going to click on this Compass button and click on H so that it zooms in just to the hoop. All right, and then I'm going to bring in the quilting designs. I'm using Hobby One on both of them, so that makes it easy. So you can go to this Merge Stitch file and navigate to it. I think I'll do that because we did the other um, the other day. Let's see, yeah. So Merge Stitch file, you can either do it that way or you can um, open up the folder and drag it over either way. So let's see, Quilt, 
not double click, just one click, my mistake. All right, and then I'm going to find, actually, I'm on not, let's see, I'm on the embroidery files, but I want to be on the quilting files first. So quilting files, hobby one, and then embroidery files, block by block. Pez is what I use for my machine. And the first one, we need a six by eight quilting design. So I'm just going to scroll down and there it is right there. It's populating still. So six by eight, double click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the design. You have to click on the stitching and then I'm going to rotate it to make it both of these designs fit. So it is not a directional file, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and click to the left. And after I get the design in, I might move it around even to see how I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that stitching again. You have to click outside and then click back on the stitching um, because once you rotate it, it doesn't let you immediately um, start moving it. So I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it up as high as it'll go without going over those um, yellow lines in the uh, designating the hoop. All right, and you can scroll out to see how close you are or you can um, tell just by looking at it right here. All right, so that's the first one. Um, I do want to go ahead and change these, but I need to bring in both, so it's not going to matter. I'll go ahead and do this first one now, just so that it's not too boring doing two. So we have the default blues and oranges, and um, we're going to have that turquoise, all of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and change all of them. It's just a pretty quick process. So I'm going to click on one, one, click on the color, and I'm going to change the first one to dark aqua, just because that's the first color that comes up for me. It doesn't matter what color. Um, as long as we're, we have the ones the same that we want to join and the ones that aren't the same to not join. So here's one, two, click on the color and I'm going to choose blaze and say, okay. Then one, three, click on the color and we already used dark aqua. You can see it right here. So I'm going to use the next color down, which is marine and say, okay. Then one, four, click on the color and we already used blaze right there. So I'm going to use the next one down, which is Oriole and say, okay. And then one five, click on the color. Now this is important. So the first block, the with sentiment, which is what this one is for, is on a white fabric with all the colored dots on it. Um, and the other one is on a red fabric. So unless you're gonna use the same color for the quilting on both of them, we do want these to be different. So I will likely use white. I generally don't like to use a dark color when there's wording on the block because then it takes away from those that wording. So I'll probably use white for my quilting on the first one. And then on the second one, um, you can use a color that will stand out a little bit more or you can use a red. It's totally up to you. Keep in mind that those the lines from the whisk, um, you don't wanna take away from that too much. So I'll probably use a red. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to choose the first color that comes up for me, which is sprout and say, okay. All right. So that one is done. We can't do a copy and paste because the other one is a different size. So on that one, I'll bring it in a different way just to show you both ways. I'm going to go ahead and move this over a little bit. I'll open up a folder and let's see documents, embroidery files, we whisk, um, and then embroidery files, Pez, quilt, and we're looking for the whisk block. I'm sorry, gee, I did that again. We're looking for the quilting design first. Let me go back to my quilting designs. I'm very anxious to get the design in for some reason. <laughs> All right, there's hobby one right there. Embroidery files, block by block, Pez. And this one, I think it was four by six. Yep, four by six. I'm just gonna click it and drag it over to um, the workspace. And then it opens up to the center. So that's the other way to um, be able to bring it over and actually now that I think about it I was thinking that the fabrics would overlap because so I'm just going to click on this and I'm going to drag it down let's see here by the way I already tried this in an 8 by 12 and it does not fit just so you know all right so I was thinking that there's not very much room here but look at we can rotate this one also we can rotate both of these and then we have plenty of room between them so I'm going to click on the design and I'm going to click that rotate button again and then I can bring it down again click outside of the workspace click on the stitching and then I can bring it down then I have plenty of room between the two so there's no fabric overlap look at that that's nice all right so same thing as before we want to change these colors 
but we want to use the same colors on the ones that we want to join and a different color on the one we don't want to join. So I'm going to go here, click on 2-1, click on the color. Let me move this back so I'm, my head's not in your way. All right, so 2-1, click on the color, and I know I want the same color we used here so that we can do them both at the same time. It saves a lot of time. So I know I want dark aqua, and I'll say okay. And then default or um, two default to orange two two click on the color I want the same color that we used before which was blaze and then two three click on the color and we have one three marine so I want two three to be marine and then two four click on the color and we used Oriole so we want two four to be Oriole as well and when I say two four I'm saying this number here all right, and then sprout, we want this different. If you're gonna use the same thread color, like a silver on both of them, then you don't have to change. You can still use sprout, but you may want to leave it open to decide later. I know for sure I'm gonna use, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use white and red. So either way, I don't want it to join. So I'm gonna click on the color and I'm gonna use the second color down, which for me is sea green. And like I said, it doesn't matter what color you're using. You're just choosing a color so that it doesn't join when we do a color sort. All right, so those are done. Now keep in mind, if we did a color sort right now, which is what I would normally do, and I will do, because I don't want the rest of the design to color sort, I only want these two, but when I bring it in, um, we'll have to do an align and distribute. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'll show you. We've done it before, but if you're new, I know there's a lot of people that are new to Embrilliance Essentials because they just had that big sale, um, so, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you um, how, how I'm gonna do this. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead, let's see, I'll click on, I'm gonna close these folders or design files. I'm gonna say, um, drag down from the bottom and up and then say Control C on my keyboard, C like copy. I'm gonna open a new tab, go to file, new page, and I'm gonna say Control V like victory to paste that. And for now, I'm just gonna leave that, all right? The designs are already, um, changed of the colors, all of that, it's all good. But I want to use this, let's see, I could go ahead and, I think I'll go ahead and color sort these. So I'm on that second tab for you, it should be um, tab two. Um, and right now we have 10 steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a color, store, color sort, go to utility, color sort, and this is important. Make sure that these are not checked. Make sure your tolerance is at zero. This is how to get the same results that I'm getting, and it's reduced it by four color changes. Always click new view so that you can check it and it opens a new tab. Here's the, that original tab that has the two designs. Now in this next one, which for you should be tab three, I'm gonna open this up and just check it. So there's our placement for our batting together. Together the, uh, tack down of the batting, the placement for the main fabric, the tack down for the main fabric, the, let's see, what is that? The first quilting design and the second quilting design. So one thing is I, sh I should have waited because if I bring in the design and decide that I want to rotate that, that quilting design at all, it's too late now, unless I go to that original tab. So just a little note there. All right, so I'm gonna go to that first one. All right, this is that first one. This one, it was the one that we used to build a color sort. This is the one that is color sorted and you can tell because they're all together in one design. So I'm gonna go to tab one. For you, it's tab one. For me, it's 24, because I have a bunch of stuff open. All right, and I'm gonna bring in the sentiment design first. So I'm gonna go here to this merge stitch file and I am going to find my embroidery design. So I'm gonna close up the quilting designs, go to the embroidery files, and right now it's just asking, well, where is this design you want me to, to open? And so you're just navigating to where you have it saved. All right, so the quilt file, and let's see, I'm looking for the whisk sentiment. If I recall, it was down at the bottom. So I wanna point this out also, if, you're, if you have a smaller hoop, the whisk sentiment is broken up into more than one we whisk, yeah, you can see it's broken up into more than one design. So if you are using a smaller hoop, you'll need to do that and there's separate directions on the CD for that. Uh, PDF directions. Um, and if you're not doing that, then you scroll down to the bottom, make sure to get the bigger one. So it's this six by 10. All right. And then double click on that. It will go to the center 
Now we need to, since we rotated that design, we need to rotate the wording. All right, so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on the rotate button. All right, and then click outside of the workspace and click back into the design and I'm going to move it up. Now this is that part that is telling you that before we do a color sort, you have to align it. And so that's why I'm doing it this way. And don't worry, I'll, I'll talk you through it. All right, so there it is. Let's see what we can see as far as the quilting. This is where you want to look at it and go, hmm, I wonder if, if I rotate the quilting, can I see more of the quilting that way? But this is pretty cute. We've got the whisk right down here. That shows really well. If we were to rotate it, the whisk would be up here. It might not be seen quite as much, but you can rotate it around and see. Um, and I like that this jar is here. If we rotate it, we'd probably maybe see the, the spoon. So you're just, so here I'll give you a for instance. So if I click on this first quilting design and I rotate it and keep rotating it, this is the other option, all right? And you can see the whisk is up there. I'll click outside so you can see it a little better. The jar is here. I like it the other way because the jar was over here and the wording's not in the way. I like that the whisk was down here. I like the other one better. This cookies is upside down. You won't see too much of it, but that's always an option as you can move it around. All right, so I'm gonna say undo, undo. And it really doesn't matter because I already have it in the other tab, but anyway, so this is here and you're just moving it. You don't have to get it exactly right. We're going to do an align and distribute, but you're just getting it close, you know, just move it around to wherever for now. Okay. Um, that's the first one. Now I'm going to bring in the next design. You can do your align and distribute on that one now, but I'm going to go ahead and do them separately. So I'm going to go to this merge stitch file and I'm going to bring in that whisk design next. All right. So let's see quilt. And it's a five by seven whisk. These are in alphabetical order, so it should be in the five by sevens and down. There it is right there. Double click on that. And remember, we rotated our quilting design, so we have to rotate the whisk. The big part of the whisk is at the top, so that will be important too. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it now. I did it to the left so that my whisk is up at the top, and then I clicked outside and I'm gonna um, move it down. You, it doesn't have to be exactly right because we're going to do an align anyway, so it doesn't matter, but get it, you know, close to it. All right. And you could do it as haphazardly as you want to. It really doesn't matter too much. So this actually is really good. If you look at the quilting, we've got the whisk up here. We have the mixer shown. The cookies is saying it in the right direction. I like that. Um, when I was testing it, I checked, I turned around the quilting and I I like it better as it is the original way. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this as is. Now we want to do that align and distribute. So I'm going to show you how to do this and then we'll bring it over to the new tab. All right. So if we, I closed up these, um, the design files just so that there, I can see them all easily. I'm going to click on this first one, which is the quilting design. And then I'm going to click the control button on my keyboard and click the third design, which is the with sentiment. All right, and then you're gonna have to watch closely because it's not gonna move a whole lot, I don't think. So if I go to Utility, Align and Distribute, and then I click Center, Center. Remember, I've got the one design and the three design selected so that both of those will join, or not join, they will align together. And then I'm gonna say Apply and just watch this part and see if it moves very much. All right, it came down just a tad, okay? So those we know now are aligned just right in the block. That's important. You wouldn't want it to, it would look all weird if it wasn't aligned just right. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the second one. So now we're gonna click on number two design and then click that control button and click number four design. And then we go to utility, align and distribute and center, center and watch the whisk and see if it moves at all. Say apply and it moved down just a tiny, tiny bit close. And you can have it, so I'll show you. You can have it like super weird. Say that I put it over here and I'm like, oh, I want line number two and number four, hit the control, and I want those to align. It will move all of it and so we'll have to move it again, but you can do it like as haphazardly as you want. So watch utility, align and distribute, and center center apply and then see it moved it so that now the whisk is aligned just right in the block but it moved the whole block too and that's totally fine we can move it right back 
All we do is use those black squares to be able to line it up, and really it doesn't matter. But um, for my little brain, I like to have it lined up right. All right, so that was how easy it is to do in Align and Distribute. But now remember, we did on this next tab, this one was the one that we used to be able to do um, all of that color sort, but then the final one is in three and you can always tell because then it's in one design. So if I go, I have one, two, and three, I'm not going to need number two. I always keep it for a little bit just in case there's a problem, but I want to go to number one tab and I'm going to click on design number three and design number four, because now those are lined up. Okay. Those are lined up how we want them to be. And it's easier because it, now I moved that last block. Now that I'm thinking about it, when I was showing you that second align and distribute, I may not have it lined up exactly how it was before. So I'm going to undo, undo. You probably didn't do that part along with me anyway. It was just to show you. All right. So this was how we had that align and distribute. All right. So I'm going to click on design number three, click on control to get also design number four. And I'm going to say control C copy. And then I'm going to go to that third tab and I'm going to say control V. And now those are lined up exactly how we did that align and distribute. You can't do an align and distribute once they're together in one design. So we had our quilting to together on one design and it would be like, well, okay, well, here's how I can merge these all together with all of this, whereas you want them each separately. So that's why you have to do it before you do a color sort or do it the way that I showed you with where we open up a third tab and we just copy it over. Hopefully I didn't totally confuse you, but um, we just want to make sure that these are lined up. And so now they're all lined up. We've got our quilting all together. And then we have these completely separate just so we don't have to worry about, oh, is this color in this design? It's just simple. And plus, it's easy for me for the photo parts for those that are not joining or doing a color sort or anything like that for those that are doing it separately. All right, so we have 14 color steps between the whole design now that we um, have the quilting all together. So it'll be a really quick, easy day. Like I said, I'm using my 9 by 14 hoop. You can see it down here at the bottom. All right, I think we're ready. I'm going to do a file, save stitch file as. Always click as. Make sure you do a save as, otherwise you will be saving over your original file. And it's usually that first one that you opened, so just don't do that. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to save it in my whisk file, embroidery files, Pez quilt, and I'm going to name it nine by 14 because that's the hoop I'm using. And I'm going to say whisk and sentiment. I'm just going to say whisk sentiment. I'll know whatever you name it, whatever you want that will help you to find it. It's, it's easy to do and click save. And then my machine is on. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to my machine. If you don't have a machine that does that, you would just save it to a USB stick. And I actually have a video on how to save it to you to a USB stick. If you're new and you haven't tried that yet, there's a video on how to do that too. So we're all ready. This is going to be super easy and then we'll be done with row two. Oh my gosh. So cool. All right, let's get started.
and my shirt today. This is a fun one. So it's just a short sleeve zip up sweater shirt probably it's pretty thin um, but I put this designs by Juju Mendy sewing machine design on it and then I added and in brilliance the wording that says sewing makes me happy added a little bit of bling and on the back I'll add a photo it's a really fun design it says serial quilter <laughs> like serial killer serial quilter I thought that was pretty fun so I have that on the back of my shirt um, and I will add a link for my Amazon storefront and I'll add the shirt where I got it um, easy peasy click on this up here and it'll take you to my Amazon storefront there's one of the tabs that says um, my favorite shirts to embroider on something like that shirts and sweaters um, so just click on that and they're all the ones that I've been purchasing and embroidering on and there's always a video don't forget go to Kristen creates on YouTube then click on the playlist tab and click on the playlist for clothing and there's a few different um, YouTube videos on how to get perfectly embroidered shirts without any puckering and placement and what stabilizers I use and all the information. Um, so anyway, fun shirt. I like this one. It's new. <laughs> And my goal, how are you doing with your goal? I haven't heard much about it, but I want to hear about it. How are you doing with your goal? It, there's so many options. If you haven't, hadn't start at the time that we started this project, you can still do it now, absolutely. It can be cleaning up your craft room, working on old projects. A lot of us have been doing that this year. We're having a productive year so far with catching up on older projects. Um, exercise, eating healthy, drinking extra water, getting extra sleep, um, so many things, getting outside. So I'm going to go outside in just a little bit. As soon as I finish filming, I'm going to go for a walk. It's beautiful outside today, and that's pretty rare around here. So I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, so I went for my goal is has been changed to um, exercise. So I'm, I can't do everything yet because of my surgery, but um, I can walk. So I'm doing lots of walking. So my husband and I, we didn't get out last night until late. I think it was like 10 o'clock when we got out. And so we did like a two and a half mile walk um, the day before, though it was a pretty day. So we went for a four and a half mile walk. Today, I'm going to go out in just a little bit and it's still light out and still pretty. And so I am hoping to get four miles out of him we'll see if not I'll have to send him back home and I'll keep going because <laughs> I want to I want to enjoy the sunshine I love sunshine so how are you doing with your goal I will include photos of the workouts that I've been doing I did one on the treadmill I did one outside um, we had friends over yesterday that were visiting from out of town and so we got to show them different areas of um, housing that in case they want to move here. That was pretty fun. I took some time off and people are commenting and saying that they're enjoying the pace of this, um, this project that we're not jamming through like we did that first row. And I'm like, yeah, me too. I got to do some other things and I took an afternoon off and enjoyed time with friends. So, so we are doing it at a, at a rela relaxed pace. So if you haven't joined in yet, absolutely do. We're having fun together. Mm -hmm. 